You know what's really sad? Not only do I have to give this GTI up, but this might be the last Mark 7 GTI we ever get. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and today we've got one of my favorite cars, the 2020 Volkswagen Golf GTI. Now this is in top spec Autobahn trim, rocking the six speed manual transmission. Now most cars, especially in this sporty, hot hatch, hot compact, inexpensive performance sort of vehicle, I would say manual transmission, ultimate way to go, hands down. However, the GTI also comes with an excellent dual clutch automatic transmission and if you're someone who doesn't care for shifting their own gears or does a lot of stop and go daily driving it's also a very good transmission option and one i can highly recommend now the gti has been around for seven generations now and starting in 2021 model year we'll actually have the new one the gti mark 8 but this one i think looks excellent it's aged really well since it came out in 2015 it provides just about everything you need in a daily driver, as well as just making that daily driving fun. Let's take a look, starting back in the rear here. It starts with one of my favorite Volkswagen features, and that's this little handle to open the back. It also hides the backup camera if it flips the other way, I think. Where is that in there? Somewhere in there is the backup camera. Maybe it has to turn all the way around, but it keeps your backup camera from getting dirty or covered with snow or slush or rain or anything like that. Nice engineering there. The back, you've got an awesome hatchback trunk area with this faux floor that you can either have right here so that it creates a flat load surface for folding the rear seats. As you can see, go right here, hold the rear seat down. Nice, just about flat load surface. Then you can also drop this floor down where you see the spare tire, nice to still have, as well as the Fender Audio Systems subwoofer. You can put this down here, and then look at that, you've got a lower load floor, a little more space, creates some little side pockets, and just allows you to fit a little bit more in here. So that's pretty neat. Now we do have two other videos on the GTI. We've got a real world highway fuel economy test and a sound system test of the Fender audio system. If you guys like this video or any of those other ones, please hit that subscribe button, it helps us out a bunch. Popping into the rear seat, I get to show you why a lot of you may be just fine and you're daily driving with a compact hatchback like this. I'm five foot 10, the seat is set for my height and I have plenty of knee room, foot room and head room. The seat's got a little bit of a steep recline and it doesn't seem like, nope, not reclinable. So that's the only somewhat uncomfortable part about being back here, but I could be back here for hours, no problem. Got a nice flip down armrest with cushion, some grippy cup holders, like to see that grip down there. No power points back here. I'm sure that's something that they'll look into for the Mark 8. But you gotta remember this one came out quite a few years ago. Really nice leather with this red stitching here in the Autobahn trim. Very pleasant place to be in the back. Even have room for car seats. You have your latch anchors and tethers down here. Might be a little tight for a large rear facing car seat. Might have to move the passenger seat up a little bit. Uh, obviously, the driver's seat is the best place to experience the GTI. Now, I am a fan of the cloth seats in the GTI because they come with plaid, but these leather seats are very nice as well. Got decent adjustments, all power for the driver as well as adjustable lumbar. Passenger, you do have some, in fact, all manual adjustments other than the recline. The recline is still power. Good old classic golf golf ball shifter feels good in the hands a little more red stitching Autobahn trim we're greeted with this nice 8 inch touchscreen that's got all your gadgets features and gizmos works really well pretty much no lag very nice to be able to just hop back and forth between screens have it be a very fluid and nice looking interface. Really one of the best systems that's available. I do appreciate that the dual zone climate control is just right here. Easy to view, easy to use, your heated seat adjustments. 
nothing's buried into the infotainment display. And here you have your different drive modes, and this raises one of the very nice features of Volkswagen Golf GTI. You can go into the mode here. Now in comfort and eco, pretty much no sound piped into the cabin. But if you go up into sport, sounds a little bit more throaty, a little more aggressive. That's because there's actually sound coming into the speakers from the engine. So I think if I hold the revs right here and go into comfort, You can't hear quite as noticeable of a difference as you could in the Jetta GLI, but I really appreciate that Volkswagen allows you to go into this custom menu, go to adjust. You can set up, all right, I want my chassis to be normal, steering normal, drive system sporty, front diff sporty, adaptive cruise control sporty, even the lighting can be sporty, climate control. Let's leave that eco, and then engine sound you can make comfort. And I don't know what's quieter, comfort or eco, but I'm gonna go for comfort. Very nice, handsome, mature, and usable gauge cluster there. Analog, tack, and speedometer, but a good digital display that gives you speed, average fuel, distance traveled, all that important information. Reverse, you can see that nice crisp camera there, some backup sensors, very easy to use. The transmission in the GTI isn't my favorite in this market. That would probably go to the Civic Si. Just a little bit more crisp of a shifter. Throws are a little bit shorter. But the GTI is definitely not bad, especially for a front-wheel drive car. My biggest complaints come down to rev hang and long gearing. The gearing doesn't bother me quite as much as it did in the Jetta GLI but the rev hang is still something to be dealt with. Not as bad as it was in the Civic Si. If you want to see that one, check out our Tale of the Dragon video. You can just hear the revs slowly falling down, and automakers do that to help score better on EPA fuel economy tests and emissions tests. But I wish that in sport modes, you'd have a little bit less rev hang. Volkswagen does a really good job with electronic power steering. The decent weight, good amount of feedback. Just a good feel to the steering wheel overall. Little turbocharged two liter. You can hear the turbo sounds. It's fun to rev it up, rev it out, but it's got a lot of torque for daily driving as well. This being the Autobahn trim, we've got the adaptive chassis. I'm gonna go into here and turn it into sport mode. Come into this good 180 degree corner. Tires aren't completely warmed up on this bit chilly morning, but we'll see what they can do. GTI does so well is making daily driving fun. It's a car that you can absolutely own for all of your errands, all of your commuting, most family business if you've got a smaller family, and it turns those mundane tasks into enjoyable experiences. It's almost akin to a motorcycle in that way, but obviously much, much more practical. Not only does it make that daily driving fun, it's also still efficient. This car did excellently in our highway fuel economy test, and even just daily driving, it gets good mileage. Do you have a little indicators on the gauge cluster there to tell you when to shift? It's also nice to just see what gear you're in, even though you can, when you're driving manual, you typically know, but it's always good to have a reminder. In sport mode, the steering does get a little bit heavier. Chassis is a little firmer, engine's just a bit more lively. But even down in Comfort and Eco, obviously, if you push your foot further down, you get more power. Mm -hmm. 
GTI makes good work of highway cruising as well. It's a little bit loud, not just on this concrete highway, but in general, there's a bit more road noise than I would like. But engine noise is good, wind noise is good, it also has adaptive cruise control. It's overall just a comfortable place to be, the seats are well supportive. You could definitely do well with Autobahn duty. Traction and stability control now, more or less disabled. Do a little 60 to 0 braking here. Pulls itself right down. Very effective. For zero to 60, we'll have to do a little bit of a clutch drop. And the car did kill some power right there. See what I mean right there between by the long gearing. You go all the way up to 74 miles per hour in second gear. The car would just feel a bit more responsive and a bit more exciting if you had to shift more often. But a car like the GTI is not supposed to be measured by its raw performance metrics. It's supposed to be driven and enjoyed and appreciated for how good it is at just driving. If you've never driven a GTI, and you get a chance to, you'll get behind the wheel and then be like, oh man, this is, and you realize just normal driving can be this fun. The long gear ratios also don't help with that rev hang issue because the revs just have to fall so far to get down to the next gear. Go down into comfort mode now and just cruise on back. Even though this car has been out for six model years now, there are definitely better performers out there. I still maintain that a GTI would be on my very, very short list of personal cars to buy new if I had to run out to a dealership tomorrow and get something. Especially now that Chevy's Volt is gone. I know, very, very different sort of car, but I'm just telling you where I'm at. In terms of my favorite vehicles out there for my lifestyle, a Chevy Volt would have been well up there, and I'm sure I could still find one new sitting on a dealer lot, but the GTI is pretty much my go-to at this point. It does everything I need it to do, practical, usable, efficient, very nice to drive, very good looking, all the amenities, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto Support. You'd be hard pressed to find a better car holistically than the Golf GTI. All right. Take a quick peek at this little motor. There it is, in all its turbocharged glory. Such a good little car and I really hope that the 8th generation lives up to the Golf GTI legacy. All GTIs have been good and we hope that Volkswagen really understands the importance of that. If you guys enjoyed the video, please hit that like and subscribe button. Check out our other GTI content. We've also got GLI content, normal Golf content. We've really covered this Volkswagen segment pretty thoroughly and we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on.